Marriage and the Pursuit of Love Do you love chicken? I know it's a strange question when we're speaking about marriage and love, but do you love chicken? Most people say, yeah, alhamdulillah, chicken's delicious. But do you love the chicken or do you love what you do and how you use the chicken? You, do you really love the chicken so much that you are willing to slaughter it, defeather it, deep fry it to deliciousness? And the answer is yes. I love how I consume chicken. Now, of course, that concept of love extends to other things in life. Are you a piece of chicken for someone? Or do you view your partner as a delicious drumstick that you are enjoying? And I do want you to kind of think about that a little bit. Um, love is something that is conceptualized in a number of different ways. Of course, there's the popcorn love that people try to sell you through some of the media that we consume. We've been brought up to think of stories like Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty. There are, of course, new age of what love means and uh, things that relate to breaking the boundaries set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are TV shows that are built about recurring one night stands. And, you know, it, uh, it's not how I met your mother. It's how many other people have. That kind of concept is something that antithesis of what it is for us as Muslims, the ideals of love. So let's speak about hub, inshallah. Love for us as Muslims is a very sacred thing. It's the epitome of our relationship with Allah. I don't mean just the love that we have for Allah, but the love that we interchange with each other that is pleasing to our maker, the divine, the one who is the bestower of love into the hearts of mankind. So the first principle that I wish to establish with you is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us that Love is something that is cast down into the hearts. He says, as is in Surah Taha, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي O Moses, I cast down my love upon you. Which means that when the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala touches us, it cloaks us in a way that even Pharaoh is unable to harm us. That the negativity that may surround us can be seen through if the love of Allah is one of our great supreme motivators in life. Notice the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah has said that those who love each other for my sake will be those who will be granted my love. So when the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends for his creation upon the earth, it results in rida, in the in contentment and in happiness amongst other people. In the beautiful hadith of Al Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ida Ahabbah Abdan, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves an individual, Nada Jibreel, he summons the angel Jibreel and says, Inni Uhibbu Fulanan, I love this particular individual and I command you to love them. So Jibreel grows in love for you, grows in love for me. And then Allah orders Jibreel to summon the inhabitants of the heavens to all that exists into the universe and to the cosmos and says, God, Allah Almighty loves this individual, you're commanded to love them. And then the point of um, contention that I want you to keep in mind, تُوضَعُ لَهُ الْقَبُولُ فِي الْأَرْضِ contentment and acceptance is placed for that individual upon the earth. Have you ever wondered why, subhanAllah, it's something that I've experienced. There's sometimes, you know, I do something that upsets my wife. And it's actually something quite significant. And subhanAllah, she is really understanding and a lot more tolerant than I assumed she would be. And then there's a couple of months down the road, I did something itsy bitsy really small. And it's something that she is unwilling to compromise. She is so upset about it. What happened between that occasion where I was greater at fault, but it went by much more smoothly in comparison to that small thing that really shouldn't have been a big issue that she really stressed on. It's not the compounding effects, it's my relationship with Allah. Perhaps in that first instance, I had done something that had brought me closer to Allah, that cast the love of Allah down into her heart for me. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the hearts of man 
that are in the chest of human beings that they are held in the hand of Allah. يُقَلِّبُهَا كَيْفَ يَشَاء Allah turns the hearts as He wills. So in one instance, my wife's heart turned towards me and in another instance, maybe even illogically, it was turned away on account of my situation with Allah. The great Imam of Hadith, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, who was a student of the Sahaba, he would teach the, the scholars who would study with him, he would say, أَصْلِحْ مَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ يَصْلِحِ اللَّهُ مَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ النَّاسِ If you correct your affairs with Allah, Allah will assist you to correct your affairs with other people in society. So that's a really important first conceptualization, that the love we have with each other is also involved and in invoking the love that we seek from Allah. And when we say that we love each other for Allah, it means that the things that we do for each other are seeking the reward from Allah, not just the pleasure and the instances of compatibility and comfort that we exchange. So I may purchase something for my wife as a gift, which is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Tahadu tahabu, give gifts to each other and you will grow in love for each other. The Prophet ﷺ says, Abraku sadaqa infaq al mar'i ala ahli. The greatest charity is where a man spends on his wife, buys his wife something nice. Sisters love that hadith. They're like, Shaykh, is that Bukhari? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So the conceptualization in love of love is a really important concept. Hub is very central especially when we make it something that involves our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is something that masquerades as love. There is um, a fraudulent love, a Hollywood popcorn uh, love. And that's usually referred to by the ulama as something called ishq which is a desirous love, a, search, a surface level love, a love of the flesh, a love of the person, a love of the time we share, that doesn't involve a relationship that extends past the carnal, the temporal, the corporal, the tangible, the real material that we live in this life. It has no spiritual connection, emotional connection, it just doesn't go past that which is sensible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us of this Ishq, infatuated type of love. The separation between al-hubb wa al-ishq is that love that is pure, and the word hubb comes from habab al-asnan, the purity of teeth, the whiteness, the, the, the cleanliness of something, that there is love that's in the heart that is not adulterated by the desire of sin or the haram. So hubb is something pleasing to Allah, for Allah, in spirit of that which is Allah, and therefore you love someone even when they may be unlovable at a point in time. SubhanAllah, learning to love your wife at a point of contention, a point of conflict, uh, learning to honor your husband and be respectful to your husband at a point of divergence of opinion is an incredible act of mahabba and love that is pleasing to Allah. The other side of it, the other half, which is the feeling of love, but that which its aim is attained through the disobedience of Allah. So a person may believe they love an individual, they might feel they love an individual, but it, they have to text them without their parents knowing. They have to make secret phone calls and make secret meeting up and hide it from the purview of others. And that immediately lets you know that that's not true love, that's not real love, and that's not long-standing love. That is corrupted, ishq, infatuated, masquerading love that will only bring pain and turmoil. And those are the important conceptualizations of hub. So the aspect that relates to uh, the concept of love for us as Muslims is that it is an overarching emotion of the heart that is practiced through behavior. So the extent of love is not that I am the one who wants to consume that piece of chicken, that I'm consuming the one who is the object of my affection, but rather is I am the servant of the one who I truly love. That I will go beyond what I would do for any other person on account of the fact that my relationship with them is seeking to please Allah. And therefore, although you might do, not do the dishes for any other human being, you might not have even done the dishes for your mom, but you do it because your wife is unwell or tired or it's something that you do to honor the commitment that you have to each other. It might be that your 
you push yourself to do something for your husband or to go to a place that you normally wouldn't go, but just because this is a point of enjoyment for him, out of the love that you have, you go beyond what you would do for any other human being to join each other in a moment of love that is beyond your moment of consumption, but that you give yourself towards others to be in love and fidelity with Allah. Always try to remember that example. Are you the chicken? Are you the consumed? Or are you the consumer? And maybe now you need to be the person who isn't being consumed and isn't just a consumer, but now you are a facilitator of love for other people and you are a giver as much as you seek to take, insha'Allah. We're going to continue discussions, insha'Allah, around the importance of marriage and the pursuit of love uh, throughout this series, insha'Allah.